Hi! Pouring a handful of salt into a glass of water will cause the water level to go down rather than up, and this is ER Science Danium. Remember my atoms, molecules and compounds video? If not, here's a link. I advise you watch it as this is an expansion on it. If you have, good job, I'm proud. Loose structures are used to represent covalent bonds. Covalent bonds is a form of chemical bonding where the atoms share electrons. Covalent bonds are stronger than ionic bonds, but also most covalent bonding is not only covalent bonding, but also polar covalent, unequal sharing, based on electronegativity differences. An atom's electronegativity is affected by both its atomic number and the distance that its valence electrons reside from the charged nucleus. The valence electrons are the electrons in the outer shell that are available for bonding. The atoms in a Lewis structure tend to follow the octet rule. This states that an atom in a molecule will be stable when there is eight electrons in its outer shell, with the exception of hydrogen, which only needs two. Lewis structures show the electrons in the outer shell as it is these which are involved in chemical bonding. The most effective way to get a Lewis structure drawn right is to draw a Lewis diagram, sometimes called an electron dot diagram for all the atoms involved. A Lewis diagram is a diagram of an atom with its electrons in its outer shell. It's important to get it right, for example oxygen has two lone pairs and two singles, but someone could mistake this for having three lone pairs. It doesn't have three lone pairs because that would mean it had no free electrons for sharing. The best way to get the correct structure is to put the four lone electrons and then add the extras. While adding the extras, pair them up with the other electrons so they have the right number of pairs and the right number of singles. For example, here's a drawing of an incorrect oxygen atom and here's the correct atom. OK, let's put it into practice. Start with something easy like water. A simple molecule of H2O. This means that it has one oxygen and two hydrogen. We can see now that they're going to follow the octet rule by having eight electrons visible. Six from the oxygen, two from the hydrogens. The two hydrogen electrons will form bonds with the single electrons of the oxygen atoms. And there we have it. In many cases, we have more or less electrons than a perfect eight. For example, ammonium and hydroxide. But what do we do? Well, we do almost what we did for water. Put out our Lewis diagram of them all and add up the single electrons. We added up all the electrons and we get 9 and 7. These extra electrons give the compound a charge. For ammonium, we have one extra, so it's a plus one charge, and the hydroxide has one less, so it's a minus one charge. We show the charge by putting them in brackets and the charge on the outside. Next up we have the Bohr model. It was introduced by Niels Bohr in 1913 and it shows the atoms of being very small which have a positively charged nucleus with the electrons orbiting around much like our solar system but with electrostatic forces instead of gravity. The Bohr model was added on to the Rutherford model. It added to the Rutherford model by adding a quantum physical interpretation of it. Although the Bohr model has been superseded, the quantum theory remains. Its main success was explaining the Rydberg formula, which was already known, but did not hold any standing until the Bohr model came. Finally, I want to add in a little bit about organic and inorganic chemistry. Organic chemistry is a chemistry subdiscipline which involves the study of the structure, the properties, the reactions of organic compounds and organic materials, for example, matter that contains carbon atoms. Inorganic is simply the opposite. Summary 1. Loose structures are used to represent covalent bonds. 2. The octet rule states that an atom in a molecule will be stable when it has eight electrons in the outer shell, with the exception of hydrogen. 3. The Bohr's model remains successful at explaining the read by formula. Organic chemistry is chemistry involving carbon atoms. Inorganic chemistry is chemistry not involving carbon atoms. And there we have it. Bit of a long one. Thanks for watching. Hit like if you enjoyed the video. Hit subscribe for more videos. I'm the Eccentric Scientist, signing off. Bye!